Hello everyone, my name's Ian Gorton and I'm the author of Foundations of Scalable Systems, which was published by O'Reilly in July 2022. This series of videos is intended to complement the book contents and be suitable for both educators wishing to use the book as the basis for an academic course and for developers who want to grasp the fundamentals of building scalable distributed systems. In this module, I'm going to briefly explore the scale of systems that we use today on the Internet. The last 20 years have seen unprecedented growth in the size, complexity and capacity of software systems. This rate of growth is hardly likely to slow in the next 20 years. What these future systems look like is close to unimaginable right now. The one thing we can guarantee is more and more software systems will need to be built with constant growth. More requests, more data, more analysis as the primary design driver. Looking ahead in this technology game is always fraught with danger. In 2008, for an article in IEEE's computer magazine, I wrote, While petabyte datasets and gigabyte data streams are today's frontiers for data-intensive systems, no doubt 10 years from now we'll fondly reminisce about the problems of this scale and be worrying about the difficulties that are looming with exascale applications. Reasonable sentiments at the time, it is true, but exascale? In reality, exascale is almost commonplace in today's world. Google reported multiple exabytes of Gmail in 2014, and by now, do all Google services manage a yottabyte of data or more? I don't even know I'm sure what a yottabyte is. Google won't tell us about their storage, but I wouldn't bet against it. Similarly, how much data does Amazon store in the various AWS data stores for their clients? And how many requests does, say, DynamoDB process per second collectively for all the clients that it supports? Think about these things too long and your head will surely explode. So let's take a moment to look at some concrete examples of system scale. A great source of information that gives insights into contemporary operational scales are the major internet companies' technical blocks. Let's take a couple of examples to illustrate a few things we know about today. Bear in mind that these examples will probably look very quaint in a year or four. Facebook's engineering blog describes their Scribe system, a solution for collecting, aggregating, and delivering petabytes of log data per hour with low latency and high throughput. Facebook's infrastructure comprises millions of machines, each of which generates log files that capture important events relating to system and application health. Processing these log files, for example, from a web server, can give development teams insights into their application's behavior and performance and support fault finding. Scribe is basically a custom buffered queuing solution that can transport logs from servers at a rate of several terabytes per second and deliver them to downstream analysis and data warehousing systems. That, my friends, is an awful lot of data. In 2016, Google published a paper describing the characteristics of their common code base. Amongst the many startling facts reported is that the repository contains 86 terabytes of data, including approximately 2 billion lines of code in 9 million unique source files. Remember, this was 2016. I think things might have grown since then. Still, real concrete data on the scale of services provided by major internet sites remains shrouded in commercial confidence secrecy. Luckily, we can get some deep insights into the request and data volumes handled at internet scale through the annual usage report from one tech company. It's a fascinating glimpse into the capabilities of massive scale systems. Beware though, this site is Pornhub.com. The report is not for the squeamish. Here's one PG-13 illustrative data point. They had 42 billion visits in 2019. Take a look at the report for yourself. Some of the statistics will definitely make your eyes bulge. Let's take a moment to briefly look at how system scale has evolved in the last 40 years. I'm sure many of you will have trouble believing there was civilized life without internet search, YouTube, and social media. In fact, the first video uploaded to YouTube occurred in 2005. Yep, that's hard for even me to believe. So here's a little history. The 1980s were an age dominated by time-shared mainframes and mini-computers. PCs, 
emerged in the early 1980s but were rarely networked. They were simply standalone machines that you worked on on your desktop. By the end of the 80s, development labs, universities and increasingly businesses had primitive email and access to internet resources, but at very slow speeds. From 1990, wide area networks became much more pervasive, creating an environment ripe for the creation of the World Wide Web, utilizing the HTTP and HTML technologies that had been pioneered at CERN by Tim Berners-Lee. By 1995, the number of websites was tiny, but the seeds of the future were planted with companies like Yahoo in 1994 and Amazon and eBay in 1995. From the mid 90s, the number of websites grew from around 10,000 to 10 million globally, a truly explosive growth period. Global networking bandwidth and access also grew rapidly. Companies like Amazon, eBay, Google, Yahoo, and the like were pioneering many of the design principles and early versions of advanced technologies for scalable systems that we know and use today. Everyday businesses rushed to exploit the new opportunities that e-business offered, and this brought system scalability to prominence, as I'll explain later in this module. From 2000, the number of websites grew from around 10 to 80 million, and new service and business models emerged. In 2005, YouTube was launched. 2006 saw Facebook become available to the public. In the same year, Amazon Web Services, which has had low key beginnings in 2004, relaunched with its S3 and EC2 services. We now live in a world with around 2 billion websites. There are something like 4 billion internet users. Huge data centers operated by public cloud operators like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure, along with a myriad of private data centers. For example, the ones operated by Twitter to implement its operational infrastructure are scattered around the planet. Clouds host millions of applications with engineers provisioning and operating their computational and data storage systems using sophisticated cloud management portals. Powerful cloud services make it possible for us to build, deploy, and scale our systems, literally with a few clicks of a mouse. All you do is pay your cloud provider's bill at the end of the month. This is the world that this series of presentations targets, a world where our applications need to exploit the key principles for building scalable systems and leverage highly scalable infrastructure platforms. Bear in mind, in modern applications, most of the code executed is not written by your organization and your teams. It's part of the containers, databases, messaging systems, and other components that you compose into your application through API calls and build directives. This makes the selection and use of these components at least as important as the design and development of your own business logic. They are architectural decisions, and once made, they are not easy to change. Let me finish this introduction with an example of the technical issues that systems must confront when exposed to the internet. This created a seismic shift in our software architecture and design principles in the 1990s. Take, for example, a retail bank. Before providing online services, it was possible to accurately predict the load that the bank's business systems would experience. You knew how many people worked in the bank and used the internal systems how many terminals and PCs were connected to the bank network, how many ATMs you had to support, and the number and nature of connections to other financial institutions. Armed with this knowledge, we could build systems that support, say, a maximum of 3,000 concurrent users, safe in the knowledge that this number could not be exceeded. Growth would also be relatively slow, and probably most of the time, for example, outside business hours, the load would be a lot less than peak. This made our software design decisions and hardware provisioning an awful lot easier. Now imagine our retail bank decides to let all customers have internet banking access, and the bank has 5 million customers. What is the maximum load that our system may experience now? How will the load be dispersed during a business day? When are the peak periods? What happens if we run a limited time promotion to try and sign up new customers? Suddenly, our relatively simple and constrained business systems environment is disrupted by the higher average and peak loads and unpredictability you see from internet-based user populations. 
This is one of the primary drivers that makes building distributed systems difficult. In the next module, I'll start to explore exactly what is meant by the term scalability. It turns out it's not quite as simple as most of us think. Thanks for watching.